colonoscopy. Well, so we just started recording and all right. So Fibonacci is, it's a, uh, like I mentioned, it's a really good strategy that I use personally. Um, and almost for every single, every single time I'm looking at the chart, Fibonacci is like my, my go-to when I'm looking at which direction it's going and also like how far the price is expected to go. Um, so, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get started with sharing my screen. And here we go. Um, today, officially, I actually started with doing more scalping trades. Um, usually like my trades do go into like the 40 pip range or 50 pips, um, uh, sometimes even like a hundred pip range. So yeah, I'm doing more like scalping trades, but with the, with the Fibonacci, Fibonacci is actually one of the, the methods that I use for scalping. Um, and it's also for long-term. So I'm about to share with you guys the tactics that I use using Fibonacci and, and exactly like what, what it is that I look for in the Fibonacci um, retracement tool. So first off, and by the way, if any of you in here that are watching live have any questions, just write it down in the chat area. If you don't understand, if I'm not uh, making it so clear, just just let me know. Um, there's no offense at all. You know, it, it might be a little bit harder just because this, this is an advanced strategy. Um, usually I teach this like towards the end of, of the training because it, it could get pretty confusing when it comes to these numbers. So that being said, um, Fibonacci tool, we're gonna be finding this tool on this very left. Let me put my annotation just so it's easier to see. Spotlight tool, okay. So the way to bring up this Fibonacci tool is you wanna go on the left of trading view and it's gonna be the third one down. We're gonna see right here, it's gonna show Fib retracement. Um, as I mentioned, there's other types of Fibs as well, like Fib channel, Fib time zone, uh, Fib fan, um, the one that I use, I, I don't use these other ones. I use the fib retracement. So fib retracement, if I click one point and then I click the second point, these are the numbers that it shows me for my fibs. Now yours might show the same. Um, if you haven't adjusted it, there might be some things here that are different, but Everything that I have here makes sense as far as like for me and the colors that I put on there and, and there's, there's all like a reasoning behind it. But let me go ahead and go into um, changing the, the numbers on here or, well, I'm not gonna change it, but I'm gonna show you all the numbers that I use. So if you go to style on the fib retracement, you can pause this video. Those that are watching live right now, like you can, it might be hard to take everything down right now. Take a screenshot. Um, I will have the recording later so you can watch this later and, and see exactly which, um, which numbers I use here and then also the colors that I use. The colors are pretty important just because it, it, uh, it tells me like green, for example, I use these as like my take profit levels. Um, and then red is like my main area that I'm looking for for, for a retracement. So I'm about to close this out here and go over exactly how Fibonacci retracement works. So the main thing that I'm looking for is first off, I'm identifying a trend. So this is going to be the very basics. We want to see higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. When it's forming a higher high, every single time it's going in an uptrend, it will do higher highs and then higher lows. Like we're, we're expecting the higher low. Now, how low will the price drop down to? That's where I use my Fibonacci tool to be able to help me out and 
be able to tell me which areas it'll most likely hit and then reject. So the way that I would get my Fibonacci tool is I connect this low right here and I connect this high point here. So go over here, get my Fibonacci tool and I click the first low right here up to this very top point here. All right, now when price is dropping down, that's what the Fibonacci tool is gonna tell me is how low will the, will the price drop down to? Will it drop to 23.6? We can see right here, 23.6%. Will it drop to 38.2%? Will it drop to 50%, 61.8? 78.6, 88.6, or 100, where it's like even with this side. So if you see here, I drew, or I didn't draw, but I have the 50% and the 61.8 marked as the red color. And that's because that's the main area that I look for price to drop down to. Anywhere inside of this area here, hit, and then continue to rise up. There is all these other areas. So again, like I've mentioned the 38.2, um, there's 50% and 61.8. These are the three main areas that I'm looking for. The other ones like 23.6 or 78.6 don't matter um, or 88.6, they, they don't really matter as much, which is why like I have them dimmed um, because they, they really don't matter too much. It's just mainly these, these three right here, 38.2, 50%, and 61.8. So if the price was to drop down to 38.2, 38.2 is my aggressive reversal area. So if it hits here and it rejects, it's most likely going to be a really strong reversal shooting up. If the price... Um, passes 38.2 into like 50%, then it goes up, but it's not as aggressive. It's now kind of moderate reversal. And then if it does go even lower, like 78.6, then it should take a bit longer than the 50% to go up. So it's just basically the, the sooner it rejects, the stronger the trend is. The lower that it goes, the weaker the trend is. If it drops down into the 78.6, it's usually so weak of a trend that at that point, I don't even get in for a buy. Um, we, we do want to buy the market going in an uptrend and sell when it's going in a downtrend. So in this case, 78.6 is my don't buy zone. 78.6 and, and lower. So if it drops anything lower between 78.6, 88.6, just anything, it's my don't buy zone. And then as I mentioned, 50, 61.8 is like my, it's like my major buy zone. And then 38.2 is, is like my um, like my minor buy zone. It's a little bit harder to get in on 38.2 rejection um, just because it moves so quick, like it comes down, hits, and then shoots up real fast. So it, it does get a little hard to get in on, on that 38.2. Um, yeah, Jerson, you, you said, can I show on the actual charts? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get into the actual charts in a bit. Uh, for now, I'm just teaching like the kind of like the the basics of of how it works overall. So, um, so minor being the 38.2, the major being between 50 and 61.8. That's going to be the the main area. Okay. Now, when the price hits, let's say the major area and then rejects. Let me erase all this. 
when it hits here and then rejects, uh, let's say it dropped down to 61.8 and then it went up. Because it's in an uptrend and we're expecting to, to be placing uh, long positions or to buy, um, then what I do is I enter in when the price goes above the 50%. So like this right here is above the 50%. And then these are why these, um, these areas are marked as green right here. You can see the 0%, negative 27%, and negative 61.8, they're green because the 0% the would be like my take profit one. TP one, the negative 27% would be take profit two. And then negative 61.8 could be take profit three. Uh, lately, I don't go for take profit three just because there's there's another thing with Fibonacci that can help you out when it comes to um, where to place like the take profit two. We'll, we'll get into that in a bit. Um, but the main one is usually going to be this, this previous high over here, which is 0%. This is a strong area of resistance just because it's the previous high. So that one is like a comfortable... A comfortable one to buy and exit here but if it goes any higher the negative 27 percent is like that next area where it's expected to go all right now this is again you have to catch this as it's going with the trend um and like you adjust depending on which way the trend is going so this is how you would do the fibonacci going in an uptrend i'm going to write this right here obvious too, for uptrend, get the low down here, high up here. We're gonna go onto the charts right now and then show, show you how it looks on the charts and then we'll go into the downtrend. So let's find a uptrend formation here. So right here, we have this low point. We have this high point. This high point is technically a lower high just because of here. So it's technically on a downtrend, but it's it was kind of choppy here. So anyways, where, where I'm currently looking at now is this uptrend here. We have a higher low, and then we have a higher high. The first higher low, it's harder to tell uh, with Fibonacci because it's just the first one. So you, you don't really know, like, because this is technically a downtrend and try to follow, follow along here. This is technically a downtrend here because of these highs here. So it looks like it's going to drop and do like a lower low and lower high and lower low, like going into the downtrend. But it does show signs of an uptrend after this point here and it does a higher high. Then when we see this higher high, we're expecting for it to come back down and do a higher low. So when we see it coming back down, and I'm going to do my replay tool, this is what we would see. If we were to look at this live, this is what it would look like. And I would think, okay, this looks like it's going into an uptrend and I'm expecting for price to shoot down. And I use my retracement tool, my Fibonacci retracement from this low to this high point up here. But actually right about there. Okay. So when, when price is shooting down, you're looking at, at the 50, 61.8 and just trying to make sure that it doesn't get into like 78.6, oops, 78.6, 88.6 or, or any lower because that that will usually tell you not to be buying this. Um, but when it when it is around this area here, and then it shoots up, you can buy above the 50. Now there's more than just the Fibonacci. The Fibonacci, just so you know, is one confirmation. It's not everything. So keep that in mind when 
um, when using this strategy is it's not going to be the only thing. I usually look for three or more confirmations to let me know like when to get in, when to get out. But um, so, so anyways, the, the first target would be 0%, second target would be negative 27%. And actually, I would say negative 27% should be like the max, just because it's a strong resistance on this side. It's, it's, a, it's a strong resistance here. So it would, mo it would most likely be best to just exit out at negative 27%. So this one actually dropped down to 78.6. So this one, I wouldn't have bought um, just because it dropped all the way down there. But yeah, so this one's kind of not a good, good example, um, but it did, it did rise up. It just got into my no buy zone and yeah. So question I just got, what time frame would you prefer to use a strategy? Um, so I usually use it on the four hour time frame just because that's where I like looking at the trend. Now, if you're scalping, you can look at it on the 15 minute. And this is gonna be more for like quicker trades like this one right here. Just looking at it, it's, it's like around 200 micro pips or, or the first one here is 150 micro pips. So it would have been um, a quicker trade on the 15 minute. So to answer your question, it depends. If you're scalping, doing quick trades or if you're doing longer term. Um, so longer term would be the four hour. And let me show a good example here. I'm going to erase everything. So that one there on the 15 minute didn't play out. Let me go four hour and try to spot out a good forming trend here. Um, okay, I can, I can see here. Good uptrend formation. Looking at this on the four hour, it would be like, this is a low. I'm gonna point out the lines right here. So it's, it, we have the high here, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Pretty much went up to this point, then down here, then it was kind of choppy there. We'll get into that part in a bit, but so we have this high and then this low, that's gonna be the first one. The second one's gonna be right here. So let's zoom in and see what we can find here. Now this might be easier to spot out in the one hour time frame, just from like looking at it here. Um, Cause the candlesticks are, are pretty tight, but you can get this low here to this high point. And if you can see when the price drops down, I'm gonna do my replay tool. Uh, let's see if I can go down to the one hour just to show you guys. Okay, so this is the, as I mentioned, the major area to buy. When the price gets into this area, um, you can you can place a buy when price goes above the fifty percent, and usually, it's it's always going to be good risk to reward if you have the stop loss around that seventy eight point six. Um, so I usually like putting it like a little bit higher around around here, so like pretty close to seventy eight point six, but not exactly. And then um, my take profit. Again, the 0% would be the first one. The second one would be negative 27%. Um, and then the third one, negative 61.8. So let's see what it looks like. And well, I already know what it looks like, but when it bounced off, it looks like it almost hit, came back down. And then it finally did its 
it's a final hit right there. So it did hit the first point. Now the second point, I believe it didn't hit or it, yeah, so it looks like the second point like kind of barely touched it. And then that was, that was it. Um, so at this point, you do see a higher high here. And now the way to adjust your Fibonacci is you move this 100%, instead of this low, you move it to the next low, which is down here. And then you move the 0% up to this high over here. So here, it looks like it got pretty close into 78.6, but it didn't quite touch it. it got kind of close. Um, then it looks like it hit the first one, which was 0%, then negative 27%, and then yeah, up to negative 61.8. Here, I would say this, this is also another area because we have this high here and then the new low is going to be this low here. So we adjust the Fibonacci, the 0% up here, 100% down here. And it looks like it dropped into like about 38.2. Well, this side in the 50% and then just spiked up. Um, one other thing is GBPCHF, it, it does move kind of, kind of uh, crazy sometimes. And you can see like lots of these wicks and this is like within one hour, it, it just dropped like Drop like 200 or so, and then just spike back up. It's more like 300 drop and then just spike all within, all within one hour. So it's, it's a bit crazier there, but usually um, the majors do move pretty smooth. So let's go to the four hour. I'm looking for just the uptrend. Oops. Okay, so low coming across like this. If I mark off these bottom lows, it's this point, this point, and then we can see price shoots up comes back down. This is most likely a 38.2 rejection right here. Um, so I'm about to do the Fibonacci from this low to this high. Yeah, so the rejection did happen at 38.2. And again, if you remember what I mentioned about 38.2, it's it's an aggressive reversal when it bounces off that area. So for this, we can see that it hit and just spiked up all the way up to negative 61.8, which would be take profit um, three. So the thing with the negative 61.8, and this is something to, to take note of, um, is Usually when it's a strong trend and it rejects off 38.2, it'll go up into this negative 61.8. If it's not a strong trend, like if it goes into 50% or 61.8, it'll most likely go up to negative 27%. And then that will be its high right there. And then it will drop down. So in this case, 38.2 uh, rejection, strong push coming up all the way into negative 61.8. Uh, perfectly here. Now we see that price reversed. So we have this high. And actually, if I were to look at this live, I'll show you exactly what I would be seeing. Um, so if I were to see this live, I would see, okay, price pushes up. This might be the high right here. 
I don't know just yet. If it shoots down a bit more and it's showing me like a push coming down, then this is most likely the high point. But I do see the wick, so it's most likely going to shoot down. And, and let's see. So if I were to see this right here, then I would think, okay, this is the high point. I get my Fibonacci tool from this low, or I'll just adjust it. So the 0% will go to the new high. And then the 100% at this new low over here. So here, what I would see is, like, let, let's see what happens. Drops down into the 50% area. It passes it, so it doesn't, doesn't bounce off of it. It passes through into 78.6, 88.6. This would be my no buy zone. Um, and so usually when it also goes into the no buy zone, it's most likely going to reverse as well. It'll start going from this uptrend to now going into the downtrend because the trend is no longer on a strong uptrend at all. It's, it's now showing signs of reversal, especially when it gets into the 100%, the previous low. Then it's going to tell you that it's, it's like most likely for sure going to reverse. So in this case, you can see the rejection happen from here, um, 88.6. This is a low, but I don't think it will continue to go any higher just because of how low this low is at. And it did, um, it did reverse. So we have lower high, we have a lower low. Now, to be able to switch your Fibonacci backwards, the way that you do it is, at first I was showing you guys how to be able to catch it going in an uptrend. So higher high, higher low, higher high. If you start noticing that it's starting to reverse, then it's, it's gonna be the same thing as what we did before. We, we tried getting the first point and the second point to be able to tell us the next point. But now, instead of looking at the lows for an uptrend, we're gonna be looking at the highs for, for a downtrend. So this would be the first high. Let's say right here, it does something like this which by the way, this is a head and shoulder pattern. So let's say it comes down like this. And then when the price is shooting up from here, after doing a lower low, so we have this low and then we have a lower low here, then we're expecting for price to shoot up and then continue to shoot down. But how high will it go up? That's what the retracement helps us out with. So what we would get is the first point right there and then the second point right there. So for Fibonacci, this point here and the 0% all the way at this bottom. So when price is shooting up, we can see, is it gonna hit 38.2? If it hits 38.2, again, the same thing applies. It will be aggressive reversal shooting down. If it hits 50%, 61.8, this is like our main area to look for. It will hit and then it will drop down. If it goes up into the 78.6, 88.6, same thing applies. That means instead of no buy zone, this means no sell zone. Because we're looking to sell on a downtrend and we're looking to buy on an uptrend. It's just real simple. Buy, buy going up, sell going down. Okay, so now let's um, look at the actual chart here. So this is kind of showing the exact thing that I drew right here. It was going in an uptrend. And then we see this low that's kind of very close to this previous low. So it's showing signs of potential reversal. This is the first low here that's confirming the downtrend. And then this is the lower low. And now we get our Fibonacci tool from this high. 
down to this low over here. Making sure it doesn't go into 78.6 or any higher. Let's see what happens. So it did, that's no sell zone. We wouldn't get in for, for a sell on this one. Even though if it might do its lower low, we still don't get in for a sell because it's not a clear trend. At this point, it's kind of choppy. And let's see what it does. So it does drop down. It does do a pretty big drop. But we can still get in later on. So now this is the this is a new high over here. And then this is a new low here. Now, this might be a question that you guys might have is like, why is it low not here? So I can actually show you guys. Um, and just from eyeing this out, this most likely didn't go up to 38.2 or maybe it did, but we'll see. So high here, low here. So it looks like looks like it did but it didn't like it wicked it wicked and then shot down but mainly like the candlesticks were in this um 23.6 area so it wasn't really high up this is more like volatility movement so that that doesn't really count i don't really count the wicks um as a point so mainly where the candlesticks were staying at if you see like the candlesticks were here they were here and like, even in all these areas, like you can tell that it went up this high because we have like big candlesticks here. Um, so the, the low would actually be down here. So I'm gonna adjust it. This, this side here, okay. So same applies. I'm looking for the price to shoot up and seeing which area it hits. Okay, so this is still not the low. If you see it came up but didn't hit 38.2, this wick almost hit it. But again, we're not really counting the wicks. We're looking at where the bodies are at. The body mainly was at 23.6. So the new low is now over here. And now we're seeing the price shoot up on, on this side here. So press play. Okay, so this is 38.2 and it did react, hit the 0% and it broke through. Aggressive reversal shooting down. Again, if it's an aggressive reversal shooting down, it should go all the way down into negative 61.8, which it did. And this might be the final, like it might not even drop any lower just because that's usually like it. Okay, so it did drop a little bit lower, but now we would be adjusting our Fibonacci. So this is the high right there. The low would be right here. Low down here, the high point over here. And again, came up, hit 38.2. Now, again, if it hits 38.2, it's most likely going to drop down to negative 61.8. But at least it should hit 0%, so it did. Second point, negative 27%, and then negative 61.8. So let's check this out. Okay, so it looks like it just hit that, that first point and that was it. And then started showing signs of, of that uptrend. So I'm gonna erase it all. Okay, so we wouldn't be able to get the first point, but the second point right here. 
hits and, and just rejects off zero percent. Okay, so so far, any questions with the with the Fibonacci strategy, or does it kind of make sense? Is there something that's a little confusing that doesn't make sense with Fibonacci? Okay, I'm assuming you guys um, understand. So here's how to be able to use Fibonacci with, with um, mixing it up with different things, okay? More of like confluence. And in order to understand this part, you do have to understand um, how, to, how to be able to um, like know all the different strategies and everything like that. So, so let's break this down. Again, Fibonacci is mainly when you're seeing trends. And what I like seeing with Fibonacci is when it lines up with all my other technicals. So to keep it very simple, this low right here and this low right here, it will give us a support trend line. So connect this point and that point. And then we have this resistance point here, which plays like support horizontal. So this is the main area that I look for right here. When price shoots down and it goes into this area here, which is double support. Double support. So it's pretty much like two confirmations there. Um, when you have double support, plus you also have Fibonacci getting this low to this high up here. And let's say price drops down and hits the 50, 61.8 area. And it rejects and it doesn't break the, the double support. Like this would be a good time to be able to buy this right here because there's three confirmations there. Now, if we can mix it with even more confirmations, then that's gonna be even better. Um, so other confirmations is, and this is where you really have to understand the, the training to, for it to make sense. So four hour is the trend. And then one hour is the reversal pattern. Sometimes a one hour won't show it. So you might have to jump down to the 15 minute for the reversal pattern. And the reversal pattern will be in this area here. If I zoom in, you know, when, when you're zooming into smaller time frames, it'll look closer and closer. So let's say here, this is where we would notice on the smaller time frame that it's going in a downtrend doing lower lows, lower highs. And let's say right here, we notice a reversal pattern, like maybe inverted head and shoulders or something. And we know when the price breaks that neckline that we should buy it. We know like the distance, oops. We know the, uh, the distance of how high it should go, at least the very minimum, but we would be aiming for like, this is trying to get like a sniper entry for the bigger trade right here. So we have this confirmation that tells us it's going to go up. Um, we can also, like on the smaller time frame, have a resistance trend line like this, and we see that it breaks that trend line. So there could be lots of different things that are telling you that this is no longer dropping down, and it's going with the overall trend on the bigger time frame. Mix out with Fibonacci, it's like it's like you're just using price action. What, what Fibonacci really is. It's a price action tool. And what you realize is most of the price action tools are on the left-hand side. Indicators are gonna be on you know, the, the top over here. You have to like search the indicator. But here on the left-hand side, these are price action tools um, for the most part. And you know, something else that you can spot out here is maybe like divergence when price is in this area or like, you know, maybe the, the MA is like, maybe like this, 
and it's hitting, it's hitting off the MA and then it's bouncing as like support. So there's just like lots of different things that can just tell you what the, what the price is going to do. Um, now, when you actually look at the candlesticks, it's not going to be always a hundred percent like perfect. Right. And sometimes to, to find those perfect trades, you have to have patience. Um, so, so that's why, like, when you're looking at the chart, just look at which direction it's going. Like if I'm looking currently right now, this is what I see. I see this low and I see this high. And this high is kind of closer to this high over here. So, so far it did a lower low over here, but it's not on a strong downtrend because if it were on a downtrend, then it would be forming this way. So as of now, there's not really a trend for, from what I'm seeing with EURUSD, the four hour, but it might go up like this. Now, I'm not gonna catch it here because I'm, I'm not too sure, but I'll catch it if it does drop down, come back up and it's actually showing a real trend. And let's pull up, um, let's pull up another one here. So this is actually a pretty good example here of um, what I'm talking about. So you can see this high right here is kind of close to this previous high. So the, tr the trend is no longer on a strong downtrend. It's, it looks like it's about a reverse. And we do see the reversal pattern here, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Um, and it does give us a higher high. So after the higher high, what are we expecting? A higher low. And so right now, currently live, we see this low, we see this high, and you can see it's perfectly at like that 50, 61.8. Now, if it drops any lower to 78.6, 88.6, again, no buy zone down here. But right now it's in a buy zone. So I usually go into the one hour time frame, or I do go into the one hour time frame. You can actually see like a prediction where I'm I'm looking for some sort of pattern or something that tells me that it's going from a downtrend to then an uptrend. Okay, so currently right now it's on this downtrend. It's not showing like lower low, lower high, like. It, it is showing a, a lower low here, but we haven't had the first lower high on this time frame downtrend. Uh, let's see the 15 minute. Again, we don't really see it because it's pretty strong. Uh, actually, we do see lower low, lower high. So this is this is kind of like giving you um, what it's showing now. But let let's say if price it did a lower high here. If it stops, let's say here, and then it comes up. And let's say it stops here, and then it comes down. And let's say it just stops here. So let's say it just does like a triple bottom and doesn't want to break through the support. That's kind of giving you signs that, okay, it's most likely just going to stop at this 50% mark, and it's going to do its reversal pattern. And in this case, we would know how to do the neckline. We would know where to be able to get in for a buy. Um, yeah, you can have stop loss below this 61.8, and you can have the take profit aiming for the 0%, if not negative 27%, or negative 61.8. All right, now I'm going to get a little bit more advanced here. Um, so as far as these take profits, so we have 0%, negative 27%, negative 61.8. Um, Usually the for sure one that I aim for is going to be 0%. Again, because that's like the resistance. But then how do you know which one to aim for? Negative 27% and negative 61.8. Which one do you do you aim for? Or do you just have trades for each one aiming for each target? Like, so I'm about to answer that question. And so I already mentioned if it hits 38.2. 
it's most likely hitting um, the negative 61.8%. All right, so take profit three. But maybe it might not hit 38.2. And like right now it's at 50%. So how high will it go up? Negative 27%, negative 61.8. So the way to be able to tell that and what I use is I get my resistance line. So this is the previous high over here. And what I do is usually for an uptrend, I get my support line, right? But I also get my resistance line to tell me kind of how high the price is expected to go. Now, actually looking at this, I would actually not really count this top point up here just because it looks like fake movement. So the top point is actually kind of like around here. You can see like lots of, lots of areas here where it's hitting, it's here, rejects, it's here, rejects. So when price comes down here and shoots up, it's most likely just going to stop at 0%. Um, maybe the very max is going to be like negative 27% when it shoots up. Now it depends on how long it also takes for it to shoot up because Maybe it might take a while and it'll go like this and like resistance will be all the way over here. So then maybe it'll hit negative 61.8. That's where it's like a little bit hard. I'll show another example right now. Um, let's see. So Okay, so I'm just gonna mark off this point here. Okay, so I'm gonna get this low and then this high over here. It dropped down to 50, 61.8 and it bounced up. In this case, I would have aimed just for the 0% just because of how um, the previous high, if I do a support line, whether it be trend line or just in this case, it's horizontal, I would have just aimed for a buy aiming for the 0%. Anything higher is now starting to get riskier because these previous highs over here. Uh, so that's, that's one example there. Um, now we do see that price shoots up into this point and then drops back down. So I'm gonna get my Fibonacci tool, uh, change up this where it's put. So here and this high. So here it does drop down to 50, 61.8. So we aim for at least the 0%. So if I were to buy, it would be at least here. But um, what I do is I get my resistance line and that's how I can kind of tell like, so from here, this high to here. So when it was bouncing up, I would have most likely closed at 0% just because like that resistance line is very close to that 0%. Now we can see that the resistance line was broken though. It broke through and it came back down hitting like support on that resistance line. And then it shot up. So that, that did its breakout. Um, so in a way it was going towards the channel and then it broke out of the channel and then it, it went even stronger. When it's going downwards, See, so Fibonacci, I would do it from this high point to 
let's check out this low point, see if it does um, in the 38.2 at least. Yeah, so it does go into the 38.2. And so in this case, where I would exit out, if I was to get in on this trade, at least 50, 61.8, it looks like 38.2 and then rejection. Where I would have got out is, I look at this support right here, and you can see it drop down. I would have aimed for negative 27%, at least 0%, but negative 27%. You can see it perfectly hits, excuse me, and then it rejects. So that would have been like a good take profit, not negative 61.8 here. And then, then we can adjust the Fibonacci because we have a new high here. This will have to be a smaller Fibonacci. So new high here. Then we have this new low. So let's adjust it. 100% up here. 0% down here. Zoom in. Didn't hit 78.6, but it looks like the rejection happened around 50, 61.8. Right there, you can see, again, most of the candles are right here. So if it had like one long wick, I wouldn't really count it, even if it hit around these areas, because the candles, the bodies of the candles are mainly in these areas here. And so this one rejected and came down, and I would have aimed for negative 27% again, at least 0% but negative 27% because it looks like it's there. I wouldn't have aimed for negative 61.8 because it would have had, had to break this support. Okay, so have a question here. Why not place the fib uh, wick, wick to wick, just curious. So fibs, the way that I see fibs is kind of like support and resistance. I've, I've also have, I've had that question before in the past where like um, about having it at the very top of the wick or like, yeah, at the very top point. And for me, I do my Fibonacci the way that I would do my support and resistance. So like right here, the 0%, I don't put it all the way down here because this is like, it's real price movement, but if you see most of, like most of the area is gonna be here. Usually where the body is at or like wherever it's touching most of the areas. Like if I was to get a support line right here for these candles, it would be, well, this would be a resistance. So it'd be right here. I wouldn't put my resistance all the way at the top of the wicks like this. I would put my resistance wherever it's touching most of it. So actually kind of like around here. Because it's touching most of most of these points. Like in this area here, I would put it right here. It's touching these wicks and it's touching like these bodies. And yeah, that's like the main area there. Here I would have put it like that. Uh, like support on this side would look something like this. So I do my support here. I don't put it down here. Same with my Fibonacci. If I was to do my Fibonacci here, I would do it from, from like this low point to this top high point here. Not the wick, but down here. And then, um, you know, again, like right here, we can see it drop down to 78.6, but that, that was mainly the wicks. The bodies, you can see like the bodies are right here. This is where the bodies are. The wicks, you know, I don't really look at that. So when like right here, price came up and then it came back down, Again, didn't, like the bodies were still in this area here, but then came all the way up to negative 27%.
and then decided to do its reversal from there. So, um, so yeah, every every single currency pair, you just if you want to do more like longer term, like maybe fifty pips, uh, hundred pips, then look at the four hour. Um, spot out which direction it's going. If it's doing higher highs, higher lows. Um, and you can just like pretty easily tell like, uh, like where you should be getting in on. Now it's not 100% easy. Like, so I like saying that it's not, it's simple, but it's not easy. Um, the strategy is pretty simple. It's just the, it's just the execution and putting everything together and having patience. And like, it, it has a lot to do with like um, mentality and, and just staying patient, like not, not having uh, any FOMO if you're missing out. Um, you're just patiently waiting for it to show up. If it's not showing anything clear to you, then don't get in on the trade. That's just the way that I see it. Um, like here, I'm expecting for USDCHF to go up, have this low here, have this high here. It dropped down, didn't go into 78.6, but you know, it went past the 50%. And right now, um, I'm aiming, I'm aiming for like high targets all the way up here. So there's gonna be like a 880 pip move right here, or 50 pip on the first take profit. So I'm aiming for that one. It's currently in profit right now. And uh, yeah, like that's that's how you would you would view it. Now this one's a bigger Fibonacci here, uh, but it did its higher high. Now this one is the first low though. So there is more risk with getting in on the, on the first low. Um, I usually do wait for it to do its higher high which the higher high will most likely go up to here and then drop back down to do its higher low. So I'll usually wait for this third point. But in this case, like I saw more things inside of here that they were telling me to get in. All right, so um, I think that pretty much wraps up the training. Uh, now it's just trial and error practice over and over and do back testing um but it is it is really not too difficult it's just it's just going through it and and if you do need need some more help just reach out to me i can i can uh provide to you like a video that they'll go through like more detail um or you can re-watch this video and hopefully it can uh it can clarify things when you like keep watching it over and over but yeah that's concludes today's training um I'm a bit past the, the time but not a problem let me stop recording now okay i believe i stopped recording um oh my.